to witness their excitement and to be a part of that excitement was was you know euphoric. It was so <laughs> cool. Hello, how are you? Fantastic. Very well. Nice to see you. Good seeing you too. Yeah. All this, I'm going to start with you. This team up is so explosive. Yeah. What was it like when you got the call from DJ to join the Justice Society? The first superhero group in, yeah. in comic books. You mean, uh, what was it like when I almost hung up on DJ because I didn't believe it was <laughs> really him? Yeah. That's how uh, it went down? You yeah. Didn't, no, you man, called look, up and you thought it was a joke? I literally did because somebody was playing on my phone. Somebody's still playing on my phone like, hey, this is such and such. Yeah. You know, conversation gets weird. So I was like, uh. So he calls from this unmarked number. First of all, I had audition. I hadn't heard anything for like two weeks, right? right. Radio silence. I thought I'd lost a job. Uh -huh. Day after my birthday, calls, hey, you know, it's Dwayne Johnson. I'm like, look, man, stop playing on my phone. I'm tired. I don't have time for this. I do not have time. And he keeps going. I'm like, bro, I'm serious. I'm not playing with you. I'm like, I'm going to find you. I'm going to track this number. We're going to get it. I'm going to see you in the streets. Oh. And he's like, no, nah, man, it's Dwayne Johnson, da, da 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 and welcome to Black Adam. I said, oh, my mind exploded. Oh, and yeah. then I was like, I'm pretty sure oh, he's yeah. going to fire me now. Um, but it was really insane. It was amazing. I was really speechless for the very first time in my career mm. because I couldn't believe that all of this, all these years of work, working towards a very specific goal to join a superhero universe mm. um, was actually happening in this way with this team, with this story. We're, we have the opportunity to introduce so many things as we do in the film. It doesn't get better than this. So I just honestly, I can still barely believe it. But, you know, I guess I'm sitting right next to Pierce, so I guess I, I have to believe some of it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great story. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Good one, man. Uh, 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 Pierce, Dr. Fate's got magic powers. Kent has a killer wardrobe. You're in the process of a career that is legendary. What excited you about this role? Oh, I, I, I had waited in the wings a long time to be part of this world. I wondered would I ever be invited in. And I'm so happy that it's Dr. Fate. And my sons have uh, big fans. I have four sons, so each boy has been a, a you know a fan of of these of these uh, comic books for many many years. Yeah. I was familiar a little bit with Dr. Fate, but as I dug into the the nature and the soul of him, I I have just a great love for the character. And he and I met each other at a good time in life. I think. Uh, and for me to play this role now, I, I couldn't be happier. And to be in the company of, of this, this ensemble is just exhilarating. I saw the movie the other night with my sons, mm -hmm. and it was thumbs up all around. You know, they, they, they looked at Dad in a new light. So, um, and they're young filmmakers too. So, uh, so it, 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 means, it means the world to me completely. Well, it was exhilarating for me as, as a fan watching the film, too, and your performance is incredible. You know, uh, Aldous, you've spoken about putting on the suit is like putting on a dream. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what makes Hawkman uh, a dream come true role? Oh, man. Well, like I said, uh, I, so I've been uh, an actor uh, since I was three years old. Um, I was spurned on to continue pursuing acting because I wanted to earn money to buy Batman toys and comics, right? So <laughs> I was already in the game. I'm already in it. But, you know, for me coming up, uh, it's a very tough business to survive in. And obviously, in terms of opportunity, equity for opportunity, it's not the same for me, you know? And mm -hmm. always had to earn and fight for certain things. When it came to the idea of being in the superhero world, I love it because I grew up on comics, but never felt like I would actually be able to, to really get in there. Kept trying and, you know, would hustle for auditions, didn't get them, would try to get opportunities, you would be told no, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, be, they would lock the door in your face, and, you know, you think, this is a dream or a hope that will never happen. So all those years of hustling and trying to stay prepared, stay committed, and stay in full belief of myself and my potential, mm -hmm. um, all amounted to this moment and I said oh it makes sense all those times that I said no were intentional because if I had gotten an earlier yes I would not be here I'm here in this time and this time right now 
as I am in this particular role for representation that is going to exceed myself. It's not about me. It's about all the other little black and brown kids that are going to come up and watch this and see this. They're going to grow up with the comics, the toys, the, the imagery and say, this is normal. I'm supposed to be there. They're no longer going to have to look at themselves and say, I don't know if I can be there. or am I, you know, They're going to know I'm supposed to. So the value of that, it, it incredibly outweighs what we know to this day, we can't even imagine and fathom how far the outreach is going to be. So it's not about me, it's about being able to be a vessel for a more progressive conversation and being a part of something that is going to be superlative in terms of how we move forward as a society. I, I'm being used in the best way possible with this particular role. and. It means progress, and that for me is everything. So yeah, when I say it's about a dream, it really is a dream come true. Thank you so much. Beautiful. I got weepy oh. listening to you. Oh. Thank Beautiful. you. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait for my kids to see this movie. <laughs> Fantastic! Thank Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I so loved this film. Loved your performances, Quintessa. I want to start with you. You've talked about really finding the process of cyclones wind abilities and I was checking for those Beyonce worthy hair tosses in the film. Wow. So what was <laughs> absolutely what was the creative process like for you finding this character? Um it was fantastic. Um I think right off the bat, uh, I had a conversation with Jama, and he was showing me a lot of the, the previs for how the character moves, and it was all animated. And then she just kind of had this flow and this like dance-like structure to her movement, and that kind of like became this like spectrum of light. And so for me, I was looking at the, the dance um, kind of aspect of it, and then started working with my dance double, and then started like finding unique forms of movement um, and unique forms of like dance that uh, were actually some of the things that I learned in theater school and and just finally got to like utilize this like thing that I really love which was just physical movement so I just incorporated a bunch of that and then looked at like a lot of contemporary dancers and modern dancers and even like performance artists because I just wanted Cyclone to feel really special and our director just gave the opportunity to do that and just like trusted us to kind of like deliver something um, that was authentic. So that just became really like personal and also um, just like refreshing to kind of be able to give in that, to be able to be given the, the element of trust on something so large like this film. So yeah. Well, it all paid off. Yeah, it thank really you. Did. Uh, thank you. Yes. No, uh, this film is such a explosive ride. You know, you've taken it on a press tour in Mexico. What was it like, and what was the experience like of seeing the fans' reactions to these characters, and yours specifically? Man, I mean, we have felt so much love and excitement for this project, you know, from, you know, finding out that we're going to be a part of it to the first day on set, the prep work we did before then, and then to the final day on set, then seeing it for the first time. There's been, you know, a, a tidal wave of, of excitement within, you know, us and, and everyone involved. And so seeing that same feeling coming towards us from, from all of these people, um, it was overwhelming and it was wonderful and it was um, just very reflective and, and felt, I don't know, affirming and it's just so cool that people love the story, people love Black Adam, people clearly are diehard fans of the comics and, and to be able to bring that to life and to witness their excitement and to be a part of that excitement was, was you know, euphoric. It was so cool. Quintessa, you and Noah play, let's say, superheroing newbies in this film. So in what way did Dwayne help you find your superhero voice and techniques? I mean, he was just like, have fun. And I think like, again, to like the first point of just like you, we were given such a, a massive amount of like freedom. And so I remember too, it was uh, DJ, but also like Jama, we were walking in to like do like our first shot like on the Hawk jet. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, you guys, like, you know, how do you feel about like this moment just as people? And we were like, oh, just like fucking stoked, like, you know, excited to be here. <laughs> and he was just like, yeah, so that's basically exactly how the characters feel too. So just embrace that and like let that really flow through. Mm -hmm. So, 
Mm. We know that uh, Dwayne has been preparing for this film for over a decade. Uh, Noah, why is Black Adam the protector a must-see on the big screen? Well, you have this gigantic, megalithic film that is has so much action and that is so intense and so fun and entertaining to watch on one hand. Um, it blows you away. The body count is super, super high. It's fucked up. It's destructive. And it's fun. But on the other side, it's anchored in a really important subject. Uh, you know, it takes place, a, a large portion of the film takes place in Kandak, which is um, a country that is occupied by a, a Western militant group. And so from there, you're asking yourself, who are the heroes and who are the villains? And you're opening a conversation, you're broaching a conversation that's very important to you. On one hand, you have this massive film that's super entertaining and allows us to escape. And on the other hand, it opens a conversation about what is good and what is bad. And if it is good, who is it good for? If it's bad, who is it bad for? And I think with that, we can all agree that the world is in need of constant progression. And this film lays a bit of uh, you know, a hand to that that conversation into that evolution and hopefully to that progression as well mm -hmm. in its own unique way. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Hi, Hi there, Canada. Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Well, thank ah. you. What part of Canada? Rivers what up? We don't have part time for this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm biting into your time. My bad. That's so good. I'm going to start with Sarah. Your character, Adriana, she is, and your performance, such a scene stealer, uh -huh. uh, freedom fighter, mama bear. How did you prepare for such a dynamic role and performance? Oh, I, um, I prayed <laughs> a lot. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I spoke with drama a lot about this character, and, you know, it was really important. To, for her to kind of come across, you know, she's kind of like a mix between Laura Croft and Indiana Jones. And, but along with those sides of her that are, you know, very tough and very smart and, you know, uh, she's a big intellectual of the country, knows its secrets. It was important to also show, you know, the compassionate side, the warm side, the part of her that is a mother. Um, so therefore, you know, it's like, as the story continues and I need Black Adam to stay, I kind of become the Black Adam whisperer, you know, and I'm able to get through to him in sort of a softer, like, more graceful way, I guess, than maybe other people. And it was just super important for he and I that all of those elements really do come across. And I would and, add on top of that, not only all that, but Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> She needed lots and lots of Doritos. Nacho cheese, what are nacho we talking cheese, about? Nacho cheese, baby! Nacho cool? baby! Nacho cheese. That's how she got through it, with all these eloquent details that she just gave you and Doritos. And I'm not Doritos. Even, I'm not even yeah. kidding. That's how we get that sponsorship. You know That's what I'm right. What's up? Nice, nice. <laughs> Mohammed, yes. as Kareem, you were, you were committing some crimes, too. You were stealing some scenes yes, with your performance was. and your singing. That's my Brother. Absolutely. <laughs> I love How so much did you enjoy bringing this uh, brother sister duo to the big screen? As you can tell, we we <laughs> hate each other. We hate each other. <laughs> I was awful working with you. It was so much fun. It was like really you didn't know what to expect every day. It was a little bit nerve wracking, but the the relationships that we built while we were filming the movie are truly for for the rest of my life. Yes. You know, sometimes you yes. work with people and you think it's just a point in time, but this is really relationships that will last with me forever. So that made it even more motivating. We leaned on each other a lot, yeah. started understanding each other more yeah. and more, therefore the characters become became deeper and deeper. It was just really, it was really a pleasure every day. It was day. so, it really yeah. was like a, a super warm, like family, like I feel like I've known these people my entire life. Yeah. You know, and I really, and I, in my opinion at least, I think that that warmth and that chemistry, I really think it comes across within all of the characters, mm -hmm. from even Pierce Pierce Brosnan, it feels like, you know? Yeah. So, and the um, way we were talking to each other, even like with Bodhi, I was just like talking to him a certain way, and I was like, wait, am I your uncle now? Like, for real? Like, yeah. it, just, it just felt <laughs> it just like a family unit. It really did, and it was really sweet, and, and Sarah and I got along so well. 
and we just understood what the assignment was. Like we felt really connected with the content and the story itself and where we were headed and understanding the, the impact that it could make in the world today and, and having representation and, and a fictionalized Middle East and what that means. And it just, it was on so many levels, there was re <laughs> levers, I don't know what that was. On so <laughs> many levels, it, it had, it really was just a, um, just a beautiful layered cake with mm -hmm. so much meaning. And um, yeah, great cast, we're all like a family. It's amazing. And, and it was just really, really great to watch and enjoy. Really was. Uh, Sarah, you spoke about Pierce Brosnan, and you you spoke uh, in an interview about how fun it was to work with Pierce, in addition to you know everybody else on the cast. Yes. So, what was it about him that made you feel you know great on set? My goodness, you know, you think of Pierce Brosnan, you're you know 007, Thomas Crown Affair, sort of this you know very mysterious, smooth, you know, but he is goofy. He's goofy <laughs> and he's yeah, got so this funny. laugh that you just did not expect to come out of him. And he is so grounded. You know, it's like he would come on set and on top of all the 007s that he's done and everything, he would come on set and have such an appreciation and a sense of wonderment mm -hmm. and would just say, Sarah, love, love, love. love. <laughs> Take you deep know. breaths. <sighs> oh, my. Yes. And then it's just he, incredible. He, yeah, and like I have a lot of children, and I would bring my kids around all the time, and he just took to them like you know, like a grandfather. My seven-year-olds are like Pierce. You know, they call Take him. Take it easy, an uncle. You know, an uncle. <laughs> right, <laughs> yes, an uncle, easy. an uncle, a brother. <laughs> um, and uh, he's just very warm, and he's accessible, yeah. which we didn't expect coming from him. You know? I learned a lot from him. I really learned a lot from him. Not only just being conscious of your breath. And people are not, and he's constantly like really breathing and taking time out and appreciating everything, but also as a professional in his acting and, and what he brought to the table, I was really blown away to the point where it felt like a master class every time I was with him or around him, and I just watched him, or even if I wasn't working, I would come hang out and, you know, just wanted to see what was going to set, say hello, and watch what he was doing and what everybody's doing, but really it just took a lot from him and, and used that for my own series in Mo. Like, mm. yeah, those great lessons from him. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations on the film. I can't wait to watch it again with my kids. So, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, bye. Like the video? Then hit the button. Or better yet, drop us a comment. Then check out our latest videos here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button here for more celebrity interviews and entertainment news.